volume's right. Hello, welcome back. This is now the end of week two here in beautiful Bahamas. You can see behind me, got beautiful weather, nice day. Um, but wanted to talk about the progress that we've made in the uh, Fulbright project. That's in partnership with the Office of the Prime Minister, Prime Minister, and BTVI, which is Bahamas Technical Vocational Institute, I believe. Um, today we actually did our first lab because um, last Friday was a holiday here. It was their Independence Day. So today we did our first lab. Um, BTVI provided lab space for us. And it was a space where anyone in any of the classes could schedule time. Because you want to minimize the number of people in the room because of COVID. They can schedule time for one-on-one -on -one sessions to get feedback on the work that we've done over the week. Or to just ask the why. Um, most of the lectures in class are... With the, I guess that what they call it, it's called the practical learning, where we're focused on actually building projects and we don't spend a lot of time in class talking about theory. Theory is saved for um, the one-on-one -on -one session and for the labs. So we had a couple of people show up today. Um, for those of you who do development, you know we're still dealing with some installation and configuration problems. You know, getting people machines set up with software sometimes becomes a challenge, specifically in advanced class, because we we're teaching React with Ionic, so getting Ionic and all the tools installed. Um, so we had someone come in today, we worked through that issue with them, so that was great. Um, what did we cover during the week in the classes? So this week, I think kind of the big highlight um, for folks was we uh, did an introduction to Superbase. For those who don't know what Superbase is, it's basically a PostgreSQL database in the cloud. Um, I've done a couple of blogs and videos on it. I think it's a pretty awesome tool. It's a nice alternative to Firebase. Um, so we walked through setting up uh, an account in, in uh, setting up an account in Superbase. Um, then we modified an Ionic program that we built already because we're writing Ionic apps already. And we created a login page and create account page. We integrated it to uh, the Superbase backend. So the team was pretty fired up to uh, be able to create accounts, write it to a SQL database, um, save profile information for the accounts, uh, and do login and log out. Um, so their minds are already racing on other things they can do with Superbase, which is really, really awesome. And then uh, next week, we'll start to talk about protected routes and show them how to kind of have private parts of their app and parts that require login. So that'll be the big thing next week for the advanced class. Um, for the beginners class, because that's more of a intro to JavaScript slash with a little bit of React. Um, we've covered arrays in the primary array filters. We covered basic input events, so button clicks, um, capturing data from input forms. Um, you know, I'm trying to keep them engaged and excited. And so I don't want to just do a whole bunch of, you know, stuff that doesn't necessarily show them how to build things. So, um, like I said, we did basic, here's a form, here's how you click a button on the form, here's how you get the data out of the form. Um, we discussed uh, JSON objects, we discussed simple arrays, we discussed arrays with JSON objects, we discussed complex JSON objects, we discussed getting the information out of the JSON objects. Um, we still haven't gone directly to an IDE. What we've focused most of our time on is we got out of CodePen because it just started to become problematic for us. And so right now we're just firing up simple um, React applications using StackBlitz, which is an awesome tool. Everyone was very excited about StackBlitz. I think one of the bigger things they were excited about they got out of StackBlitz was the, um, the hints for errors. One of the, a lot of feedback that I got from folks with that they, in CodePen, they were just getting stuck on syntax errors without a lot of hints on what the error was. And if you haven't used StackBlitz, it's, it gives, because it has Microsoft IntelliSense and, you, and all the other good stuff in there, you get pretty good feedback on what the errors are. So um, people were very excited to, to see that tool and to start to use it. I think next week, uh, we'll start, um, we always kind of refresh the stuff we covered previously, but I think we'll start to um, introduce them to um, navigation with the React browser um, so they can start to string together some pages and see how that works. Um, every week's an, an interesting adventure because I adjust the curriculum based on the progress that the class is making and also try to figure out more creative ways to keep people engaged. Uh, we're kind of measuring engagement by number of people who sign up for office hours and 
um, the number, of, the amount of activity that we find in our group forum, where we post all the assignments, we post um, uh, summary pages. Because uh, what I do is I start the class with a, a Notion document of what I want to cover, and then based on questions and feedback that I get, I modify that Notion document, and then we kind of collect them all together, and I post them in the forum, so I can look at the number of views that I'm getting on the documents to see how many people are reaching out and, and looking at them, and, and uh, the views of the documents have gone up, so that's definitely awesome. So we're getting through, and so that's great. As for the advanced class, we're using Slack. Quite a bit more activity with the advanced class, which is what I expected, because I think they're past that kind of, I don't know what I'm doing, I can't do this, I can't do this, that confidence. Um, and so they're way more aggressive with wanting to learn, way more aggressive with answering questions. But I think in the end, you know, we're accomplishing what we wanted to accomplish. Uh, starting to have some discussions with uh, BTVI. I'm looking forward to creating a longer term relationship with them to focus on building, you know, technical capital down here in the Caribbean. Um, like I said, they're, what, 50 miles offshore of the U.S. They speak English during our East time, Eastern time zone. I mean, there's no reason why um, this should not be a hot spot for, you know, hot offshore development or development in, in, um, with, with the lower cost of living. So hopefully I can figure out how to make that happen here. Um, and I guess that's it for now. My only, my only challenge now is to figure out what to do this weekend. <laughs> um, it's beautiful weather here. Don't really know a lot of people here. Um, but I'm certain I'll find something to do um, that's unique. One of the things I want to definitely make sure I do while I'm here is not spend every weekend sitting inside my corporate apartment. So uh, wish me luck on finding something interesting to do. Actually, wish me luck if, if you're from the Bahamas and you're watching this. I'm trying to find a decent sports bar here in uh, Freeport to watch the finals. So any feedback on that would be appreciated. Uh, but until next week, thanks a lot for watching. Um, and as I said, I might in the end push some of the content that I've created out on my website. So keep a lookout for that and uh, take care. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.